Now I'm recording it. Okay, so typically with our webinars, we have somebody uh, kind of helping us on the back end with the chat, the Q&A. Um, so, but we're flying solo today because we're all doing webinars. So, uh, again, if you have questions, things you're wondering about, uh, please put them into the chat. And then time permitting at the end of this webinar, I would love for us to go through and delve into some of those questions and have a little Q&A. Okay, so let's see how it goes. We're going to go ahead and get started. So this is getting started with Classflow Desktop. We're going to take a look at a number of different features of Classflow Desktop today. And, ooh, my apologies, one other little bit of housekeeping. Um, I believe that everyone is muted. So again, use the chat if you have any questions. Also, you will be receiving a recording of this webinar and our Camp Classflow webinars uh, via email. We're going to send that out to you um, within seven business days hopefully sooner, so that you can, if you want to rewatch this or maybe check out a different webinar or forward it to a colleague, you'll have a record of this. So that's why it was very important that I paused and recorded it. All right. Also, just another note that for participating, for being here today for this hour, you will receive a certificate of attendance and participation from uh, Promethean's professional development. So we want to recognize you and, and give you some credit. So. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Those are the little housekeeping items I wanted to be sure to mention. So my name is Courtney Salazar. I am a Classflow consultant with Promethean. And what that means is that I have the privilege of helping Classflow users, educators mainly, all over the Western US. And I'm coming to you guys today from Colorado. And I've been with the Classflow team for about a year. And prior to that, I myself was a classroom teacher. I taught for nine years. Um, Four years at the high school level, I taught high school English, and then I taught five years of uh, middle school language arts. So uh, that's a little bit about me. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I want to go ahead and minimize this because really, primarily, we're going to be taking a look at Classflow Desktop. Okay. So Classflow Desktop is a program that you can download. I'll show you where to find that in just a moment. And um, when you download it, it will live on your desktop, fancy that. And what it looks like is this little icon over here. Okay, so this is Classflow Desktop. Now when I double click this, it will, I will get this little wheel, okay? Uh, it doesn't look like a wheel just yet, okay? But it's just a little circle, and if I grab the black part of that, I can move it around my screen anywhere I'd like. If I click on this middle three lines, that's the menu button, but on our team, we lovingly refer to that as the hamburger. If I click on the hamburger, now you see what we're calling it the wheel. Okay, there are a lot of tools within here. Now, Classflow Desktop can be used both offline and online. So offline is really fantastic if you're at a school or a district where uh, maybe you have kind of spotty internet, you're still able to create and deliver Classflow lessons and activities offline, even if your internet is not cooperating with you that day. Okay, so I know for me, I was teaching out in a portable. Our internet was not always super reliable, and so it would be great to have something that I could use offline in those situations. Okay, so before we kind of move on any further, I do just want to address where you can get Classflow Desktop. Now, I'm not really advising that you spend the next few minutes downloading it, okay, because I'd really love if you were just kind of present and with us. Um, so let me go ahead and just kind of go back to Chrome here. And again, I can move this wheel, move this wheel out of the way. All right, so when I log into my Classflow account, I guess I should say for starters, you'll need to create a Classflow account, which is free, hooray, I love free things. And I know plenty of other teachers that love free things too. So Classflow account is free. And once you've made your free account, you will log in and you'll be taken to this home page here. Now, right in the middle of this home page, there's a little icon that says Get Classflow Desktop. So you may already have it. If you don't, again, I'm not saying you have to do this right now. Um, but when you click on that, you can download it for Mac or Windows. And if you have any questions along the way, we have a fantastic help and support team at Promethean, and we actually have our own dedicated support team just onto Classflow. So uh, we've got you covered. If you struggle with anything along the way, if you encounter any difficulties as you're trying to download desktop, um, just give us a holler and let us know how we can help you out, okay? All right, so that's where you can find desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go back to the, my little wheel here. I'm gonna expand it. 
So right now, I'm offline. And like I said, you can use Classflow Desktop online. You can also use it offline. Um, oh, I'm getting webinar brain where I've done a couple in a row now. I can't remember if I just said I'm online or offline. I'm offline. Let me kind of clarify that um, because my wheel is gray. Now you're going to see that as I log in and even as students are connected, um, that the wheel is going to change color. So I really like that I can quickly take a look at the wheel and that just, just the color alone denotes what mode I'm in. Okay. All right. So you'll see that when I'm offline, I have a lot of tools available, but there are some that are not functional just yet. So we're going to start with the top part of the wheel here. And what I want to do is start by um, showing you instant whiteboard. So this is instant whiteboard right here. It kind of looks like a rectangle with a little squiggle inside of it. I'm going to click this. And let's go ahead and move this wheel out of the way. We'll put it on that side for now. Okay. Oops, let me move this recording window a little bit so we're not, you know, that's just kind of showing up as a gray box for you guys, I think. But I do still need to keep recording. There we go. Okay. So now you can see all of these tools that we have down here. In instant whiteboard. So I'd love to take a moment and just kind of show you some of the things that are really cool about instant whiteboard. First of all, I love that it takes up the whole screen like a true whiteboard. And also, this is perfect for if you're just getting started. So maybe you want to do a warm up or let's say like a bell ringer with your class. Maybe you don't have anything very formally prepared, but you do just want to get everybody up and running right away. So I can, I have this pen tool here. I could just go ahead and write. I'm writing with a mouse, so please forgive me. Oh, okay, this isn't as terrible as I thought it might be. Warm up. All right, that's one of my better ones for writing with a mouse. Whew, you guys are in for a treat. Okay, so also if I expand on this little arrow here with my pen, wow, a lot of options. So I have different colors. I've got this whole beautiful color palette, and so maybe I'll change it to purple. Okay, I can change my line thickness. So I could make nice big lines if I wanted to. Also, I can change my drawing style. This part actually came from a great deal of teacher feedback. Teachers saying, hey, I want to be able to draw straight lines. Okay, um, I totally get that. I'm a little bit of a control freak myself. And if I'm going to be using a, a program, then it would be great to be able to draw straight lines. So, okay, I'm going to make, make this a little bit smaller. So let's say that I wanted to make a quick little T-chart or a little graphic organizer. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. This is already getting a little filled up. I'm going to go ahead and um, start a new card. Now, the way that I would do that, go ahead and do my select tool so I'm not just drawing all over everything. If I click on this little button here, toggle carousel, and in fact, you'll notice that as I hover over things, I can see what they are. Okay. So if I do toggle carousel, it's going to show me all of the cards. So I know they go by different terms in different programs, you know, pages, slides. Here in Classflow, we call them cards. Move that wheel a little bit. And I can easily add a new card with this button right here. Boom. So I've got this brand new one. Now, even you might see that I have the option to delete. So this first one, eh, I don't really need that anymore. Okay, I can delete that one. Now we've got a fresh new card. And I can make as many cards as I please. So let me grab this new card. Now, hey, if you want to afford yourself a little bit more space, maybe you've got some cards ready, you can click that toggle carousel again and it will just drop back down, okay, just to give you maximum space. So let me go back to showing you guys how easy it is to, let's say that maybe I wanted to make a little T-chart, and we're going to do something like a pro and con or a for and against. Nice and easy that I can add those straight lines, okay. Now, you'll notice we have some other options down here. I might even change my color again. Let's pick this fuchsia. I like that. Okay. This one is going to give you a very, very fine pen, even more of kind of like, almost like a pencil perhaps, okay? So I could write pro, and on this side I could write con. Oof, doesn't look as good as my warm-up, but that's all right. Okay, also I've got a highlighter here. And again, we've got the same lines, thickness and so on, okay? And also this one here is pretty neat. It's kind of um, like a shape recognition. So let's say that I was going to draw a shape. Let's see how well I do with this. If I try to draw a triangle, boom, it's going to turn it into a triangle for me. Let me try it again with a, um, let me make a different color here. Let's make it a little, I'm going to try a circle. Let's we'll see how it goes. 
oh, okay, not too shabby, all right? And then I can move these around, I can resize them, and so on. All right, so those are just a couple of features I wanted to show you guys right off the bat with our various pen tools. You'll notice that we also have an eraser, and you have some options in there, even with erasing in straight lines, so that could kind of come in handy. You can also um, clear annotations. I'm going to go ahead and go back to this new card, start with a fresh one again. Okay, so the, uh, we've got pen, we've got eraser, we'll take a look at text. So with a text tool here, uh, I can go ahead and make a text box. So I could have, I guess, written the word warm up. And so on, and then you can kind of resize that, move it around, all right. Um, ooh, this is another cool one. I do want to be sure I point this out to you. So this is a, called our text recognition. So let me go back to my pen here. We'll use red. We haven't used red yet. So if I was trying to write something like, um, <laughs> oh, let's just go with class flow. Okay. So maybe you've got students coming up to the board, or maybe you yourself don't have super awesome penmanship, and you're writing something in your class is like, what? Or you have a kid come up to the board, and, and they're adding something, and you want to neaten it up a little bit. All you have to do is go to this text recognition selector, and then you just draw a little rectangle around it, and boom, turns it into font for you. That is pretty snazzy. Also, you can use it for math. So let's say that I have 2 times 9. Okay. This time I'm going to go to my math one, draw a little box around it. All right, and that neatens it up right, right there for you. So I like those a lot. I like to be sure to point those out to teachers and new users. Okay, we also have fill. Pretty self-explanatory. Whoa, that is a little garish. Let's tone it down. That is nicer. Okay, so fill tool, pretty straightforward. Shapes. All right, we've got a whole array of shapes here. So it's also going to remember which one you did last. So if you want to have a couple of arrows, it'll just remember until you change it again to select a different type of shape. Okay, and these, of course, you can use the fill tool to fill them in as different colors, maybe. All right, I'll go back to my selecting here. All right, and you can also decide if you want to duplicate these, reorder them. That's kind of like if you were an Active Inspire, if you are an Active Inspire user, it's kind of like layering. You can rotate things. You can anchor, which is kind of like locking them down. All right, so if you were to save this, which we'll talk about here in a moment, if I end up saving this lesson, and then maybe I want to use it later, Perhaps that I don't want to have my students being able to manipulate all of these things and move them all around. So that's like locking, locks it down. Okay. I can also edit the points and the rotation. So let me just show you edit points real quick. So when I do edit points, again, the way I got there was to select on this little cog on my object. In this case, this shape is an object. And then I'm going to edit the points. And maybe I want to have this be much longer, or I want these bits to be I don't know, maybe I just want to kind of customize my arrow a little bit, okay? There we go. Also, I can change how it rotates. So edit rotation pivot. I can decide where I want this arrow to rotate. So maybe I don't want it to rotate over here on the tip of the arrow. Maybe I want it to rotate here on the base. So now, when I rotate it, it's going to move from that point. So. Wow, you can really get lost in here, guys. You can play around with this stuff and, and have a lot of fun kind of exploring all of the different things. And we are only in instant whiteboard, believe it or not. So for the sake of time, I'm, I know we're just going to kind of keep moving on here. Oh, let me do show you real quick, though. Let me go to a fresh card so we can kind of start fresh. We've got this toolbox, and it has a lot of fantastic tools. So let's say we want to add a ruler to something, and we can always rotate that around. Um, and... All right. Well, I think I drew a little bit on there, too. Um, graphing calculator, you will notice it's kind of grayed out right now. It wasn't a moment ago. A graphing calculator needs to go on its own separate card. So just keep that in mind. If you want to use the calculator, you've just got to put it on a fresh card. No worries. So again, the way to do that, do your carousel. You can add a card. And then you would be able, now that I'm on a fresh card, I could add that graphing calculator. Revealer is a cool one, especially if you have some stuff that you want to kind of break down or chunk for students. You can just slide things down that way. And uh, let's see, ooh, Spotlight is a very fun kind of James Bond vibe 
You can change the circle and reveal as much or as little of your screen as you want to. Okay, now let's say that we've done this great warm up. We were all over the place. It's not a very cohesive lesson, but I think um, you kind of get what I'm saying. I'm just trying to show you some of these different tools and features here. So now when I'm ready to wrap up my lesson, um, I can save it or I can just close out of this. I'm going to click on this little cog over here. And if I want to save it as a lesson, I can, or I can exit the whiteboard. So I'll save it just to show you what happens when you do that. It's going to immediately prompt me to pick a location on my computer where I'd like to save that. Um, I think it defaults to your documents. And I'll call this one, well, call it Tuesday warm up. It's going to save as its own special file extension. It's going to save as a .cfl file, and that stands for class flow lessons. Okay? So I could save this, and I can come back to that lesson and play it and use it again with my students whenever I want. Now that I've saved it, I will I'll go ahead and exit, and we're back to our desktop. Okay. Again, everybody, um, I, if you have any questions as we're going along, please put them into the chat or the Q&A. I will do my best to address those at the end, time permitting. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and keep moving along here. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and grab a resource real quick. Let's see if I have... Oh, all right. I'm going to grab a PowerPoint to show you this next bit. So as teachers, I know that you already have tons of resources that you love to use with your students, and they're things, some of which you might have been using for years because they just work for you and you love them, and you know that every time you get to that certain time of the year or that point in the unit, you're going to use X resource, whichever one it is, okay? Now, in Classflow, we recognize that, and um, on our Classflow team, we're, most of us are former educators, so we understand that you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. It's so time consuming to recreate resources if you already have them and you really like them a lot, okay? So here I've got this PowerPoint, for instance, and maybe I'm teaching a Spanish class and we've been just going over some vocabulary, all right? Now let's say that I get to a point in my PowerPoint that I would like to annotate over. I want to show you desktop annotate. This is so cool. So I'm going to expand my wheel. So this was the instant whiteboard session over here. Okay. Now this one, oh, okay, now this one is desktop annotate. So when I click this, it's going to take a screenshot of that PowerPoint, and you'll notice, bam, my toolbar is back. Here we go. This is the instant whiteboard toolbar. Now if I already had an instant whiteboard session going on, which you might remember that I just saved and closed out of my other one. If I already have one going on, it's just going to add this desktop annotation, this image, this screenshot, to my carousel of cards. So it's just going to kind of keep piling up down here. Okay. Now, if I don't have an instant whiteboard session already because I just closed the one that we concluded with, it will just give me a brand new card and it's going to start a new instant whiteboard session. Okay. Now, from here, I can maybe have my students come up. Maybe I want them to label what these are called. So maybe someone, let's see, La Lima and El Limon. All right. Whoa, accent. Crazy. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm able to annotate over this. Now, if I want to go back, I'm just going to select. Oops, sorry, I think I added another card. Okay, so to go back, oh, I think I'm still on my, okay, now I'm on my select tool, okay. All right, so I want to go back to my PowerPoint. Now I'm moving through my PowerPoint. Maybe I'm on another slide here. And this time, I want to do a desktop annotation of these tomatoes. Again, it's going to take a screenshot. It's going to add these tomatoes. I think I may have added an extra card in there. Yep, got a little carried away. Just so excited about desktop annotations. Okay, so it's going to add this new card in here. And again, we can continue to annotate. I could, um, you know, I could highlight something perhaps. So if you have text, if you have a PowerPoint, you have a PDF, um, you can desktop annotate over anything on your desktop. I know right now we're using a PowerPoint, but I just really can't emphasize enough. Let's say you have a Word document. Let's say you're on a website and you just want to take a screenshot of that website and be able to annotate over the top of it and add it into your instant whiteboard session. You totally can. So 
So that's desktop annotate. Again, I have the option here to save this or exit. I'm going to go ahead and exit without saving this time. Oh, I'm still on the highlighter. All right, this time I'm going to exit. I'm not going to save. Still here in my PowerPoint, and I think that you're getting the gist of that, so I'm going to feel comfortable closing that PowerPoint out. Okay, so, so far we've looked at Instant Whiteboard, Desktop Annotate. We're still totally offline. We haven't even got online yet. Okay, looking at my watch here, and I'm just going to keep moving on. Um, capture is pretty cool. We're not going to delve into this too, too deeply today, but when I click on this Capture tool, I'm going to have some options. I'm going to be able to capture, well, different types of things. Let me show you. I could just take an image. So let's say I want to take a picture. I could do a screenshot. I could do a particular window. So if I have several different windows open on my device, it's going to pull all of those up and let me select which one. So if I have, you know, Chrome and then I have Word, it's going to let me pick between them. I can also do an area. So it will give me a little rectangle um, sizing handle, and then I'm going to be able to select an area on my screen that I want to take an image of, or take a picture of, excuse me, an image. It's going to save that to my computer, but it's also going to save it here to the media gallery. So uh, I also want to point out that we can take a video. So let's say I want to record a part of our lesson or something that we're doing. I'm going to have the option to record my screen or my window. I'll just go ahead and do my screen just to show you. And then I'm going to be able to record with audio or without audio. Okay, so we'll just try it real quickly here. You'll notice now my wheel turns into this recording menu. So I can click record. Oh, what a joy it is to hear my voice, I'm sure. <laughs> so we're going through the lesson, and maybe I want to point out here, maybe I'm asking my students which sea or ocean or body of water do you think this is? Just gonna just messing around with you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. I can pause or stop. I'll stop. All right. And you'll notice I'm getting a little uh, note down here that it saved that under my documents. And it's also saved it here under my recent captures. Okay. You can also record audio. Maybe you don't want any images associated with it. You just want um, audio of some kind. You can record that way as well. Okay, so that was just briefly, that's capture real quick. Now with browse, let's take a look at this. I'm going to click on this button here. It's a little file folder. And we've got some options. So speaking of recent resources, move this a little bit so you can see it better. There's my Tuesday warm-up. That was the instant whiteboard that we did at the beginning of the webinar. Okay. I've got some other lessons here that I've worked on recently, or maybe I've shared them with my class recently, and I've got some activities that I've built as well. Okay. Now I can create new things. If I select this, I can make a new lesson or a new activity. We'll take a look at these in a moment. Whoops. All right. And I can also browse my computer. So let's say that I have other class flow lessons I've made, and maybe I want to do this calculator test. It will prompt me to find those on my computer. Or I can convert files to lessons. Okay. So. We will come back to this one in a moment because we're going to talk about how you can convert a flip chart should you like. You can also convert a smart notebook or an Adobe PDF. That will turn that into a class flow desktop lesson for you. Okay, So we'll come back to that in a moment. I do want to show you how to make a new lesson. So I'm going to do create new, create new lesson. Now this is going to take me into lesson builder. Now if you're an Active Inspire user, um, I would liken Lesson Builder to Design Mode. This is where you're building your lesson, you're snazzing it up, you're putting all of that great, rich stuff in there for your students, but you're not playing it yet. You're, this is just kind of the behind the scenes part where you're creating the lesson. Okay, a couple of important things I want to point out just to start with. I'm in my new lesson and it's just called that, New Lesson. It's not a very great title so far, so I will have to change that and save it. So this is going to be your card that you're working with, and these are your card notes. So if you want to put any notes in there, these are kind of like page notes from Active Inspire. Um, this might be just reminders for you of like when you get to a certain part in your lesson, maybe you want to pose a particular question to your students. Maybe you want to remember to um, have them refer back to a certain page in their book, or you want to add a different activity in there. These are just kind of notes for you, okay? You'll notice this is very PowerPoint-esque. You can change these, the size of these notes. And if you click on this teeny little arrow over here on the right, you can drop that down and just kind of afford yourself more space. Now, if at any time you want to add some notes, 
you can just pop that right back up using that teeny tiny little arrow. Okay, so that's card notes. Now I can also change, uh, oh, you know what, okay. I love to show um, people who are new to Classflow Desktop, new users, I love to show them this feature up here. So when I'm in Lesson Builder, if I go to this cog over here on the right, if I select this, I can do show icon and text. For me, this is helpful when I'm just kind of learning how to use it. I've got all of the names right here, so I don't have to hover over each tool and you know speculate about what on earth that could possibly be. I've got all the titles. If I ever want to change that back once I've learned what they are, or maybe I just prefer a minimal look, I can get rid of those, okay? So that's a good thing to know, I think especially right off the bat. I'm gonna put those titles on there. Okay, so speaking of giving yourself more space, you can toggle this header, so you can push that up so you've got even more room to work. And also under this cog, you can change the card resolution. Personal preference, totally up to you. Um, so I kind of like, right now it's standard, I'm, I kind of prefer this widescreen one, but that's just personal preference. So there you go, okay? Now, adding new cards over here is really easy. You can add as many cards as you want. You can actually even change kind of what this main card is gonna look like. You can change the background. You could rename it if you want there to be a little title there. Okay, that's up to you. So this is what we call a section card. Some teachers just like to build a lesson, everything's going on in the same section. Other teachers prefer to um, kind of just add these section cards as kind of placeholders, um, just kind of to visually denote when something, when there's a different part of the lesson. And that's personal preference, okay? So when I click on this card, I have some options. I can add more cards. I can also add more cards to my lesson down here with this button on the bottom. I can add a new card like that. Okay, so plenty of cards to work with. We've got a few so far. Let me just run through a couple of these tools with you. Fill, we've already gone over that. We know not to pick bright yellow um, so early in the morning. Okay, so I can fill um, text. I'm gonna be able to add a text box, I think. Oh, I'm still on fill, duh. What's going on with me? Okay. Hmm. My computer seems to be slowing down a little bit. Sometimes when I share my screen, that happens. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. So text, I'm going to be able to add text box. We've got the pen here. Hmm. Kind of slowing down a little bit. Sorry, everybody. Okay. So I've got my pen, my highlighter. I'm still going to have access to that color palette and the width and the different drawing styles. They're just gonna be kind of a little bit different than they were in Instant Whiteboard in terms of placement, but all the same tools are there. You've got your eraser. We've talked about that. Oops, let me make sure I'm not drawing all over my page here. Um, toolbox, again, all of those same tools from Instant Whiteboard. If you select camera, if you have a camera um, operable on your device, you can take a, I guess you could take a selfie and you could add that to your lesson, but maybe you wanna take a picture of something or you're also gonna be able to pull images from your computer too. Okay. Um, also, another way to add things like that is to do insert. So let's say here that I want to insert, uh, maybe I have an in image from my computer. Haha, -ha. my computer is slowing down again. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm sure some of you are amused to find that yes, on the class team, we also encounter technical difficulties from time to time. So I'm going to be able to pull. Um, resources from my computer if I have images saved or what have you, okay? Now this, I'm still offline, so I do need to manually save this, okay? And when I first click save, it's kind of like save as. It's going to prompt me to decide where I want to put this and what I want to call it. So um, let's just call it lesson building. Again, that's going to save as a .cfl file, so I can save that. I've got this little green check mark up here. And Oh, I was thinking if I came back to it, maybe it would. Okay, here we go. So I can also, um, if I want to preview what this lesson is going to look like for my class, I can go to play and I can see how I could move through the card using the arrows or even with my pen tool, I can still annotate there. Okay, so I can see um, what my students will be seeing when I'm offline like that. All right, so again, I'm still offline. My wheel is gray. And um, again, we haven't really taken a look at creating new activities. We do have a separate webinar today about activities. I can't think offhand of which time slot that is. But again, remember that you're going to be getting a recording 
of this at the end. So, um, and I believe you'll probably get the one about activities too as part of this playlist. So, class activities are very simple and easy to make, um, and they're lots of fun for students. They're very engaging. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, I did also want to show you how I can bring in a flip chart. So, I'm going to convert file to lesson. We've got our new lesson here. I'm going to have to pick where on my computer is that flip chart. And kind of thinking back to our Spanish lesson here, I'm going to go with Los Colores. So I have this flip chart. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And it's going to, depending on the size of the file of the flip chart, some take longer than others to convert. Okay. Now it's not changing my original flip chart at all. It's really kind of almost just making a copy of it and turning it into one of those .cfl files, the class flow lesson. All right. It's going to take me back into Lesson Builder here. And I will be able to, if I want to just play my flip chart as a lesson now for my students, we could roll with it like that by clicking play. Here we go. So I can play this as it currently exists. I've got my regular flip chart here. Let me move this wheel. All right, so we're going through the lesson. Or if, you know, now I'm in Builder and I decide, hey, you know what, actually I should add a card between these two, all right? And then maybe I want to pull in some other resources or something. Maybe I want to add an activity that I've already made. So um, you can kind of customize your flip charts like that. Okay. Now when I click Save, you're going to notice I didn't have to, it didn't ask me where I wanted to save it as or what I want. It, there was no Save As. It just said, OK, we're saving. You might be wondering, OK, well, where is that going? Where is this saving to? That is a good question. Let me show you. Hmm. Okay. It's going to save right here where your original flip chart is. So I had mine just regular on the desktop here. Uh, whoops. Oh, I did not mean to double click that. But you can see how the flip chart is the same as the lesson. Um, it's going to save that lesson, the CFL file, wherever the original location of the flip chart was. So whatever folder you had it in, whatever place on your computer, it's just going to add that one to that same area. And it's going to give it the same title, but of course, it's a different file. So that's just a little crash course in the, um, the flip chart conversion here. And so now, let's see here. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing all right. Good. I do want to also show you some of the ways um, to now use the rest of the wheel. We've been only working offline so far, so I do want to show you what it's like to be online. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and expand my wheel. And now I'm going to click, oh, and this might be actually the perfect opportunity to show you this too. If I click on this little cog over here to the right, I have some options. In just a moment, I will be logging in. But I also wanted to point out to you our help, OK? So at the top here, we have a whole library of videos. And these are short. I don't want you to think, oh, watching a video. No, they're, they're literally like 45 seconds to a minute long about a whole range of different topics, OK? And so um, if you have questions, or you just need a little clarification on something, I know I'm, I'm totally moving really fast and furious here through this. So I don't doubt that you probably have questions or things you're wondering more about, or once you start playing around in it, you may have some questions, OK? This will take you to those videos. We also have a help website with lots of articles. And we also have a whole support team at Classflow dedicated to helping our users. So please reach out to us. Uh, we have a lot of different ways you can contact us. And um, if you have questions, if you even just have feedback, um, that's always really terrific to hear, too. So let us know how we can help you, OK? Uh, all right. So just wanted to make sure that I made a little plug for our help and support team. I know as teachers a lot of times um, that we pride ourselves in being experts. And sometimes we are a little reluctant or hesitant to ask for help. But I really just want to let you know here at Classflow, we have your back. Um, we are really dedicated to helping you this be an easy and wonderful um, platform, I guess is the word I'm looking for, that you can use with your students. So let us know how we can help you out, OK? All right, I'm going to go back to that cog. Now I'm going to log in. OK, so mine's a little bit different. I use a little, I have this little demo account um, when I'm just demonstrating things, like today. So I'm, my prefix is a little bit different. And I've got my username here. I'm going to type in my top secret password. And if I have needed it to be reset, or if I don't have an account or something, or if you sign in using other ways, um, then you can log in like that. So I'm going to log in. Now my wheel, I've been offline. 
is going to turn orange. Now this shows me I am logged in. And now you'll notice I can do a couple of things. I can go to class flow. If I click on that class flow, now mind you, this is not going to be in a browser. It's just going to be an easy way that you can access class flow. Okay. Whoop. Oh, I must have had, maybe that was from my previous session. Okay. All right. So here, if I wanted to come and use something from Marketplace, or my resources, that'd be an easy way that I could do that to connect. Okay. Oh, I do need to close this. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Let me close out of these as well. Okay. So now, also, I can connect with students. Okay. Let me go back to my demo.classflow.com. All right, I'm going to log back in here. I think I have too many class flows going on over here in Chrome. Okay, let me go back to that lesson that we started with, getting started with class flow desktop. I've got this lesson and I'm going to deliver it to my ad hoc class. So let me go ahead and All right, so now that I've opened up a class, you'll notice that my wheel has turned green. And now I've even got this little code. This is my class code, okay? And uh, you may be new to class flow, but I do wanna let you know this is just kind of an, a code. It's a five-digit code and it's gonna be unique just for you, your code, just for you as a user. Now you can create um, special classes within your ClassFlow account. So I'm just gonna kind of open back up here to my ClassFlow online. So you can build rostered classes, um, but this one is what we call an ad hoc. It's just for today, just for on the fly to get connected, okay? So I'm actually gonna kind of move this down a little bit. Now this code, just like the wheel, I can move it anywhere around my screen, and it's gonna stay up here while this ClassFlow desktop class is in session. So let's say that a kiddo comes in late, or maybe, maybe an administrator comes in and they're gonna evaluate you and you say, hey, join in to our class session, okay? That code's gonna be right there. Now, I know that we're, oof, we're already kind of running short on time a little bit, but should you like to connect right now to my class, um, you could open a new tab if you want. And if you just kind of want to keep watching along, that's okay too, all right? So in a browser, go ahead and if you'd like to play along a little bit as a student, you can go to demo.classflow.com slash student and it's gonna prompt you, you're gonna get these, this picture here. If you select this tab, you're gonna be able to join the class when you enter this code. So it's here in red, but again, it's also kind of floating around on my screen in this class code box. Then you're gonna to need to um, enter your name and you can just say join anyway. All right. I'm gonna actually do the same. And let me see if I can even, I think I can add this into our chat, okay? So again, totally optional here. Oh, and I did see a quick question there coming in. Um, you can deliver lessons to the students online or offline, okay? If you're delivering a lesson offline, just remember that you're only gonna really be able to cruise through the cards and use that pen tool to annotate. So if you really wanna um, connect students using their devices, I would suggest connecting, logging into your account, and then um, selecting this little people icon here. And you can see I have a couple of classes that I've already made, but today we're just doing an ad hoc session. Hooray! Ooh, six people in. Good job, you guys. Okay, I was going to model how to do this too. Um, I'm going to show you how to get logged in, but all right, you are stellar again. So I can start a class right here. So if you want to deliver lessons to your students and you want to be able to push things out to them that will show up on their devices, let's say you want to do some of that polling where you're asking questions and you're having students respond, then you're going to need to have your students connected. To, so in other words, to be online. But again, you can deliver lessons offline or online. And I'm going to hop in an incognito window real quick and follow suit. I'm going to go to demo.classflow.com slash student. All right, I'm going to join this class. 
and type my name. And I'm going to be taken to this. Uh, oh, all right, you're in as my student. Okay, good. So I've got, let me minimize this again here. Okay, so I'm here in my Classflow desktop. I've got seven students connected at this point. All right, and now you're going to notice that I have students connected. Now I'm enabled to do even more. So almost the whole wheel now is lit up. So we could still do an instant whiteboard session. Okay, I can also now push things out to my students. So I'm going to go back to, tell you what, let's go to that Los Colores lesson, the one um, that I converted from the flip chart. So I'm going to open this lesson back up. Do not worry if you don't speak a lick of Spanish, that is okay. This is just for demo purposes. All right, so my lesson's opening up. I've got eight people connected now. All right. Now if I click this drop down, I'm actually going to be able to see the names of my students that are connected. But um, just for anonymity and just for this webinar, I'm not going to kind of reveal who all eight of you are right now. Actually, I guess there's seven and then there's me too, right? Okay. All right, so now I can play this lesson. So now I'm playing a lesson online. I've got my students connected. I'm going to move that class code, move my wheel. All right. So now if I want to push something out to my students, let's say I'm in this lesson here, I can select this button. Now you may have a holding screen so far. I may have forgotten to mention that. If you have just the, hold, the holding screen is what we call just kind of this cascading series of just landscape images. That's just kind of meant to be non-intrusive and really it's meant to refocus the student's attention up to you. So until you send them something, until you push something out to their devices, that holding screen is just kind of a signifier for them like, hey, I need to be watching up front. I need to be paying attention to my teacher right now. All right, so now I want to push something out to you. I'm going to send you this card. So I'm going to click this button here, send. And now I like this. This is great for differentiation. I can decide if I want to send it to everybody or maybe just certain kiddos. Okay, you have a choice. You can also decide what you want to send. Do you want to send the current card, this card in the lesson, an entire screenshot? So let's say that I wasn't in a class flow lesson. Um, maybe I wanted to send something from that instant whiteboard. I could send a screenshot or I can send a particular window. I have a whole bunch of windows open down here maybe. Okay, I'll just send you guys this current card. Back to my student screen here. And whew, we got a lot going on on my screen. It's getting a little jumbly. All right, and now I've got this. Again, this is my student view. My students are seeing this card. So maybe we're reviewing our vocab at the beginning of the lesson. And I want to push that out to them so everybody has it. Okay. So again, the way I did that is just to send um, that using this little send card. It looks like a rectangle with an arrow jumping out. All right, Classflow is also known for its awesome um, polling, our interactive polling. Let me see what else I, I'm trying to remember what I have in this lesson here. Okay, so we'll just stay with this card here. So let's say that I wanted to send a poll. I can click on this button. Now this is a little bit different than if you've done polling with Classflow Online. The only difference is that you're going to have to select your image. So what is it that you want your students to see? Do you want them to see the entire screen, a window, a region? So again, that'd be you have the sizing handles, you're dragging a little snippet of your screen to push out to them. Are you sending this card from the lesson? Are you sending something maybe that you captured from your media gallery? I'm going to send you this card. That's my image that I've selected. And now I've still got those eight great poll types from Classflow. So I can decide what type of a question I want to issue to students. So I'm going to go with a text. We'll do a text poll. And I'm just going to verbally ask you, what is the Spanish word for green? Okay. Now on your student screen, you should be getting this card. But now you're also going to have a little text box where you can write. So feel free to type in your response. You can submit at the bottom. You do need to click that blue submit button in order for me to get your answer. Okay. Now, you can see my results rolling on in here. Whew, we got everybody almost answered except for me, slacker. Okay, nice job, everybody. So I, have, I can see how many of my students are responding. So I, that's kind of just a little bit of formative feedback. I see how long it's taken for everybody. Now, if I click on this, that's going to be my results viewer. Hey, 100%. All right. Muy bien. So 
few things I want to note about class flow polling. I'll do move that out of the way there. Poll results always come in anonymously. This is awesome because um, I know if you're, you know, asking your group a question, you're going to have those students who are always raising their hand. You have those other kids who are kind of looking away and and kind of dodging your your eye contact and they don't want to respond or what if they get the answer wrong. This anonymity ensures that everybody feels comfortable with answering and it kind of also sets the expectation. Everybody in the class is going to respond, okay? All right, sorry, I'm not trying to make that box move around all over the place for you guys there. So results always come in anonymously. Now I can decide to show the names if I want. Again, right now we're in the webinar, we're not trying to expose everybody, although you did get the answer correct. So uh, I could show the names here if I wanted. Other little bits of formative feedback. I like that I have a timer. So if I see a student respond really quickly, they might either definitely know that answer or maybe they're just typing something in just to finish, just to get it done, right? Now, alternately, if I have a student who is taking a long time to answer, that kind of might signify to me that maybe they're struggling with this material a little bit. Now, I can look at my results in different ways too. This is not gonna be the most riveting pie chart you've ever seen because uh, everybody got it right, so it's 100%. Although you can see how um, this could kind of come in handy. Um, this one's also really fantastic for if you're doing like a, um, a debate and students can change their poll results. So you can kind of see this data change. You can also look at it in a bar graph. Every, again, not the coolest bar graph you've ever seen. Or just your regular old list, okay? Now I can click that button again to pop out of my results viewer. I'm just gonna click it unclick it, and now I'm back to my lesson, okay? Now I can pause this poll, I can stop the poll at any time. All right, Whew, that was real fast uh, through sending and polling with your class, okay? But I did just wanna make sure that we touched on those and we looked at the whole functionality of the wheel. All right, so now I'm gonna select on my class, ad hoc class, you have been amazing. Muy bien clase, and I'm going to end this session. So you just got booted out. Let's make sure I did too. Yep, donezo. Class is over. Okay. Um, now I'm, my wheel's gone back to orange. I'm still logged in, but I don't have the students connected anymore. Now if I click over here, I can log out. That's up to you. Some people like to stay logged in. And then if I click that little cog again, I can quit. And that's gonna quit class flow desktop entirely, including my lesson. The wheel's gone, totally gone. And if I want to reopen that, I can just double click on my desktop again. All right, so as we were wrapping things up here at the end, and I do apologize for running out of time, um, and what's next? If you don't have Classflow yet, I would encourage you to get it. It's free, which I love. And um, like I mentioned, we're going to be sending you this Camp Classflow playlist. We're going to send you a certificate of attendance. We've got plenty more fantastic webinars on the horizon. Um, which, which we're going to be doing one at a time, so we won't have kind of the, um, the um, chaos of this morning, we could say. And then we always like to see how you're using Classflow and encourage you to join us and follow us on social media. Um, help, I know I mentioned it, but on that little cog, we've got a whole bunch of different ways that you can get Classflow help. So I want to thank you so much again for being here today. I sure appreciate you. And I hope that you have a really wonderful rest of the summer and have fun playing around with Classflow. Thanks, everybody.